Welcome to this episode of the Zoology Podcast. So my last podcast got me thinking about the platypus, specifically the quote by Darwin that two distinct creators must have been at work while designing the mammals of the old world and those of the new. Why are these animals so unique, so strange, and what makes them seem like a design stuck in time? Well, let's find out by looking at the puzzle that is the platypus. If you saw a platypus in person, you might think that someone was playing a joke on you. Clearly, someone has just sewn a duck's bill onto the face of a rather rotund otter and then sewed a beaver's towel onto its rear. Well, this is what the British naturalist thought when Captain John Hunter, second governor of New South Wales, sent a platypus back to Britain in 1798. However, it was not a hoax. The platypus, also known as the duck bill platypus, is a very real animal native to eastern Australia and Tasmania. But it is still rather strange. So, let's look at what makes them such a wonderfully unique creature. The most notable thing is a platypus's duck-like bill. However, unlike a duck's bill, the platypus's bill is an elongated snout and lower jaw covered in soft, sensitive skin, with nostrils located on the top of the bill. While underneath water, platypuses close their eyes, effectively making them blind, but they can still effectively hunt. And they do this by using their bill to find worms, insects, shrimp and crayfish that compose a platypus's diet. They don't just blindly dig around in the dirt with their bill, however. They are more sophisticated than that. The platypus are one of the few mammals capable of using electroreception. On their bill are lines of electroreceptors, numbering around 40,000, which allow them to locate their prey by detecting electrical fields generated by their prey's muscular contractions. These electroreceptors are so sensitive that as a platypus swims, it sweeps its bill from left to right. The strength of any electrical signals across the bill is what allow them to accurately locate their prey. Once they have detected something tasty to eat, the platypus will turf up the prey and its surrounding dirt and bite. It stores the prey in its cheek pouches where it carries them to the surface where they are then eaten. The platypus needs to eat around 20% of their own body weight each day to survive and this requires them to spend on average about 12 hours a day looking for food. Inside the bill, it gets even more interesting. Young platypus actually have teeth, but these teeth fall out before they reach adulthood, and are then replaced by heavily keratinized pads called keratondontes, which they use to grind their food. So that's all you need to know about the platypus's most fascinating feature, but it doesn't end there. They have even more crazy features at their disposal. Once their food is all ground up, you would expect it to go down the gullet to their stomach, but no. For some strange reason, the platypus has evolved to bypass this common feature of mammals. They don't have a stomach. Instead, they just send their food straight to their intestines. How strange is that? The platypus then stores any excess nutrition in the form of fat in its beaver-like tail. Okay, so that's a lot on food and digestion, so let's look at some other funky things that the platypuses have. While these animals have spent so much time in the water that they have evolved web feet to aid them in swimming, they are in fact only semi-aquatic mammals. Platypuses spend plenty of time on land, but now you might be thinking that surely they can't travel over land a lot due to their webbed feet. But ah, the platypus might have you beat there, because they have an ingenious trick. They can retract the webbing of their feet to expose individual nails, and this allows them to run in a reptilian-like gait and dig burrows. Their burrows are normally quite simple, being located only about 30 centimetres above the waterline. However, pregnant females construct deeper, elaborate burrows, sometimes measuring up to 20 metres long, and with blockings made at intervals which might act as a safeguard against rising water or predators such as snakes and rats. However, before we talk about a platypus's pregnancy, we have to talk about their breeding dynamics. The sexes prefer to be alone, except for when they are around four years old and it's between June and October, as that's the mating season. During this season, males often fight other males, inflicting wounds on each other with their sharp ankle spurs. Yep, that's right, all platypus have spurs just above their ankles of their hind legs, which they can use to stab others with. However, it gets even more interesting. The spurs on male platypuses are venomous. That's right, the male platypus is one of the few mammals that produce venom. 
This venom is strong enough to kill animals as large as a dog, but not strong enough to kill an adult human, but it can leave you in severe pain. It's thought that males use this venom to incapacitate other males for a short time, while they make off with the females. Platypuses mate in the water, where the male chases the female and holds onto her tail. The male is then able to impregnate the female and fertilise any egg she has released from her ovaries. Well, technically just the left ovary, as that's the only one that actually functions within platypuses. The other one just doesn't work. Another weird quirk. Then after mating has occurred, the male just leaves. He just leaves her alone to raise the newborns all by herself. And after this event, the female will begin constructing a birthing nest with all the comforts possible, like using leaves to soften the flooring and using reeds as a makeshift bed. The female will spend about 28 days in these burrows before she gives birth to around three eggs. Yes, eggs. You heard that right. This is a mammal that lays eggs. Platypuses, like their cousins the echidna, are mammals, but they are a very early branch of mammals called monotremes. Now, platypus eggs are small and leathery, looking more like reptile eggs. The female will incubate the eggs between her warm belly and tail, and will do this for around 10 days, until the platypups hatch out of their eggs. Now, platypups is not an official name for the babies of the platypus. There is no official name, but platypop is the unofficial name, and well, I think it really fits, and it's just adorable. The platypups use an egg tooth, a temporary sharp protrusion from their bill to break through their egg shell. They then search along their mother's underside for milk. Now the platypus being a mammal has mammary glands from which they produce milk. However, of course the platypus has to be different, so they don't actually have any teats from which the milk can be drunk. Instead, the milk is released through pores in the skin. The milk then pulls in the grooves of the mother's abdomen, which then allow the young to drink, and this is continued for about four months. During this time, the mother initially leaves the burrow, only for short periods, to forage. When doing so, she creates a number of thin soil plugs along the length of the burrow. Pushing past these on her return forces any water from her fur out, and this keeps the burrow nice and dry. After about five weeks, the mother begins to spend more time away from her platypops, and at around four months, the young emerge from the burrow to live independent lives. So, overall, the platypus is a very cool animal. Recent genetic research has placed them at a strange junction between the evolution of early mammals, with that of reptiles, birds, and even fish. In fact, in the last few years, we have learned that when placed under a black light, a platypus's fur will glow in a bluish green light. So these egg-laying, venomous mammals, with no stomach, a beaver-like tail, only one functioning ovary, a duck-like bill that can sense electric signals and feet with retractable webbing, are also biofluorescent. Yeah, it seems like evolution threw all the traits possible at this species, and the platypus decided to be funny and keep all the quirky ones. And I think that really makes them a fascinating and unique puzzle of a species. <laughs>